Hey there everyone, here checking out something a little different. We're going back to school. Uh, Panga's Kaizo Kindergarten for beginners. Also, this is a uh, Final Fantasy VII music. Loving that. Best game ever. Uh, so this is like a tutorial hack. Um, so I don't know how hard it is, but I have a feeling I'm going to learn some stuff from it. But uh, I definitely recommend this if you're just getting into Kaizo. But anyway, let's uh, let's do it. Disclaimer, this tutorial hack only covers mechanics of vanilla Super Mario World. Note that custom hacks can, at any time, change the physics of the original game. Please consult the README of each hack to see if any changes were applied. If the creator did not include a README, they should be banned from making hack. This hack will probably not make you a Kaizo god overnight either. Yeah, definitely agree with that. These types of... Warning, this hack contains trolls, which may not be suitable for tilted gamers. Player discretion is advised. Oh my god. But yeah, these tutorial hacks, same with Mario Maker, like my new soup training levels, it's not going to make you good. It, the idea is to explain things, like understand why it works and everything, you know. Oh, there's an input display on screen. What the heck? That's really cool. Okay. Hey, spin jump, B normal jump, X or Y, run or grab, movement, pause. Yada yada. Note, this guide uses A, B, and X, Y interchangeably. X and Y are exactly the same. A and B only act the same while airborne. The sole difference between A and B is the type of jump you get from the ground. Press L plus R together to retry any selection, any section. Press start, then select to exit any level. Press select plus L to toggle the input display. I'm going to turn that off because I have my own input display. Uh, select R to toggle the RAM values. I'll get rid of that, I guess. Press R plus down to toggle the text. There is one dragon coin hidden in every level. Find all 40 to receive a special prize. Note, dragon coins do not save when you reset. Okay. So, alright, let's do it. <clears throat> Jump heights. That. This level teaches you about vertical speed mechanics. The faster you move, the higher you will jump. You can clear four tiles with a spin jump without running speed. You can clear five tiles with a normal jump without running speed. Please do not put six tile jumps in a level. It is possible with a running speed normal jump. This is possible? What the heck? <laughs> Why did it work that time? You can clear five tiles while bouncing off of enemies. Okay, I actually think I'm gonna leave that HUD text up there. That may be useful to see. Hold either jump button to fall slightly slower. Yeah, so that's the concept of slow fall. You guys probably hear me talk about that all the time. Let go of jump to fall faster, yeah. So if you um if you're holding jump, you fall slow. If you're not, you fall faster. Enemies on the other hand fall at a, a static speed. You fall faster when walking off of layer two block. So he like, look how fast he falls off the one on the right. 
like he falls normally there, but look at this. I didn't know that. Uh, layer 2, if you don't know, it's kind of like the background layer. Um, oh wait, shouldn't there be a dragon coin? So like, uh, layer 2 is hard to explain. Okay, so I need the- I want to find the dragon coins, so where, uh, where is it? Again, here? Hey, okay. <clears throat> Alright. One, one out of 40. This may be a long uh, playthrough. Uh, what is that one called? Uh, Happy Champ or something? I don't know. E meter. This level teaches you about horizontal speed mechanics. In SMW, your horizontal speed always varies. Walking speed, only holding right. Running speed, holding Y and right. P speed, running speed when P meter is full. P meter increases while running and decreases when not. The max speed while walking is between 19 and 21. The max speed while running is between 35 and 37. The max speed with P speed is between 47 and 49. So yeah. If you guys can't tell, there's a lot that goes into this game. Uh, to get P speed, the P meter must be filled completely from 0 to 112. P meter increases by 2 per frame and decreases by 1 when not. Once P meter is filled, it stays at 112. Note, you can only build P meter when you're on the ground unless you are T posing. What the heck? Yeah, so I feel like you may have seen me do this, but yeah, you can build the P meter like that. That does not apply to Mario Maker. It is not that way in Mario Maker. You can also build a P meter when jumping back and forth. And it takes a little while, but... Dragon coin? Hey! There we go. So yeah, this does not apply to Mario Maker at all. I thought I had P speed there. Okay. P-meter does not decrease when climbing on vines. Interesting. P-meter does not decrease when swimming. So that's kind of cool how you can see the P-meter. Uh, <laughs> that's cool. I don't think I've ever... Uh, had to do that. Walking off ledges decreases the P meter. P meter resets when entering pipes and doors. Cool. I can't remember what that emote's called. There's so many of these Pog Champ variants that <laughs> I can't remember. Slopes and momentum. Here's a big part people get tripped up on. This level teaches you about momentum preservation. Tapping down on a slope makes you slide. This also works for upward slope. It does apply to Mario Maker. We have slopes now. Letting go of right when in the air locks your speed. Okay, yeah, so this is a really important thing for Mario World. Um, because sliding on the slope, uh, 
gives you a higher speed than you can normally get. And if you uh, hold right, yeah. Your speed decreases by one every frame when holding right if greater than run speed. So basically, um, the game checks your speed when you're holding left or right. If you're not, it uh, doesn't bother with it. It also decreases by one every frame you touch the ground. need to edge jump there. Okay, something's wrong with that. Oh, it's because I, I jumped on that ledge. So you have to actually jump off the slope part. Do <laughs> not put these in your hack. Oh my god. Yeah, there's some meme hack out there called, uh, Super Slope Muncher that Link Dead made. Oh my god, it's a nightmare. <laughs> oh my god. Airborne momentum works the same in ice levels. Oh, what is this? Hey. Yeah, I don't want to be holding right when I'm in the air. Whoops. Cool. I actually didn't know that about ice. You can also kill enemies as long as you butt slide. This also works for upward slopes. Yeah. You're near invincible while sliding. We beat it. <clears throat> My god, this picture. Okay, spawn mechanics. This is something I don't understand super well. This level teaches you about spawn mechanics. Right spawn when they are about two tiles off either side of the screen. Sprites also despawn in the same way. Sprites respawn as long as they are not killed or swallowed by Yoshi. Now you can scroll the screen to manipulate spawns. something here. Sprites respawn if they fall in a pit. Where is he? Oh. Okay. These sprites do not despawn off screen. Certain types of lava can kill sprites. This lava kills sprites, but allows items to respawn. Yump. <laughs> this lava kills sprites, but allows items to stand on it. Coin? Hey. <clears throat> this lava kills. Oh, yeah, we already know that. On slow. 
sloped lava sprites do not die. Oh. Interesting. Okay, I don't I don't know if I knew that. Vertical level sprites spawn based on the top and bottom of the screen. The same rules apply. We did it. Happy champ. Or God, what is that one called? I can't remember. Frame rules and timers. This level teaches you about the different... Oh god. The different frame rules and interactions of SMW. Some sprites do not interact with other sprites. Generally, sprites do not interact with platforms and carryable items. Yeah, I, I screw up on this a lot. In Mario Maker or in Mario World, because in Mario Maker that would have landed on the platform there. But not in Mario World. Sprites such as Koopas, Goombas, and Spinies interact with each other. Oh, so the shell goes through the P switch. Interesting. Spin jumping off two enemies at the same time will kill you. I've definitely had this happen, but... <laughs> Is this like a broken setup or something? I've definitely been killed because of that in Mario World. Sprites interact with you every other frame. This means you can get a lower point of contact and not make the jump. Chucks and Bowser statue fireballs are on a global timer. This means you can pause the game to manipulate when they shoot. Yeah, uh, some games require you to do that. Bill launchers are not on a global timer. Is there anything off to the left here? Spinning you throw items in the direction you're facing regardless if you hold left or right. Thrown items do not interact with you for 17 to 18. Blue ring openings spawn in the same degree of rotation that you despawn them, even after you die. Uh, 
Oh, that's right, yeah. So, Boo Ring can kind of be broken in Mario World. You can die after touching an orb or goalpost. Enemies and munchers do not damage you during the end cutscene. Note, the gold tape hitbox extends vertically until it hits the top of the level. Orb. What? Oh yeah, and dying after the goal uh, <laughs> usually kills you. Tape. Right. We did it. Yeah, the music's broken because of the post goal death. Yeah, we're in world two. Regrabs. Oh, this is very important. This level teaches you how to do regrabs. You can only bounce off of. Excuse me. You can only bounce off certain enemies with a normal jump, and vice versa. Spin jumping on certain enemies kills them and does not give you a bounce. Normal jumping on some enemies kills you, yeah. You can use either jump on a charge and a chuck. Note you get the same bounce height off of any enemy. Rexes are the only enemy that will give you a high bounce when you kill them with a spin jump. Rexes are also the only enemy that you can bounce off of twice whoops, with a normal jump. Yeah, these things are pretty cool. It'd be cool if we had them in Mario Maker. Well, that was close. Regrabs allow you to gain distance with less height. This is ideal in sections with low ceilings. To do a re-grab, press A or B, then immediately let go and repress jump. Spin jumps give you a lower jump. Use them in sections with less space. Remember, holding jump makes you fall slower. Yeah, that's the gist of it. You can also do a re-grab after bouncing off an enemy. Note, if your bounce was low, you pressed B too late. Whoops. Looking for the dragon coin. <laughs> this looks like the dev routes in his Mario Maker levels. There we go. Regrabs are hard to get used to, but they're so useful. So useful. Oh, it's a new one. That one's a uh, Pag Chomp. <laughs> Just Pog Champ, but the vowels reverse. Jump Heights, the low bounce. What the heck is this? In some situations, you need max height from a low bounce off an enemy to avoid death. To do this, release B right before bouncing off an enemy after the bounce. Oh, pressing B too early will give you a high bounce, pressing B too late will not give you any height. Yeah, that's good. You want to hit it, and then you want to let go just at some point before you bounce 
off it and immediately after bouncing off it, uh, I'll hold it. And uh, it'll give you that like drag like you yeah. get. Very, very, very useful. But where's the secret? Dude, this music's so loud. Chomp. Alright. Jump heights, the high bounce. Ooh, we just did the low bounce. In some situations, you need min height from a high bounce off an enemy to avoid death. To do this, release B right after bouncing off an enemy necessary to a re-grab after the high bounce. Pressing B too early will give you a high bounce. Da, 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 yeah. yeah, so you want to like, you want to hold it until you hit the enemy, then immediately after you hit the enemy, let go. It's kind of similar to how it is in Mario Maker in this instance. Obvious. <laughs> okay, eight coins. We did it, dude! We're killing this tutorial hack. Nah, this is uh, it's really fun. I mean. Kind of basic for me, but if somebody were trying to learn, this is teaching stuff. Oh, assessment. I didn't know there was going to be a quiz. Regrabs, jump heights, the low bounce, jump heights, the high bounce, all previous concepts. Good luck. Dude, I didn't know there was going to be a test. What the heck? Where is, uh, is there a dragon coin here, too? Ah, <clears throat> oh, what the heck was that? This is actually kind of challenging. Whew. That was actually kind of hard. So I still don't know if there's uh, dragon coins in this level. I don't see why there wouldn't be, right? Oh, okay, there are.
This stuff also applies to Mario Maker, like all of this re-grab stuff, like it really does. It's definitely not as noticeable as this game, but it, it is in Mario Maker, trust me. Pog you. <clears throat> all these Pog variations. Cool. Left, right. This level teaches you how to balance on enemies by using left. Oh, okay. For slowly moving enemies, adjust your position with left or right without holding X since you move slower. Yeah, so you can also, like, get Mario in sync with the... Like, I'm not pressing anything. You can see on the input display. Uh, that's one way to do it. In some situations, you need a high bounce when balancing on an enemy to avoid death. To do this, hold a right after bouncing to get a high bounce. Remember the max height from the low bounce level. Oh, I despawned it. <laughs> I should have learned from the spawn mechanics uh, level. Oh, this has got to be where the secret is, right? Yeah. Okay. Ten. After moving enemies, there are two different ways to do left right. You can either press right without putting X to slow down, or and hold X plus right when you need to speed back up. Yeah, I just I'm always holding run, I guess. It doesn't matter which way, I guess you definitely have more control if you're not holding run, but I don't know, that's how I learned to do it. Or you can quickly slide your hand from left to right while holding X to slow down. What? Oh. I see. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty tricky to not overshoot those or undershoot. Balancing while holding an item is trickier since you cannot let go of X, so lightly tap left to right to slow down and speed up accordingly. Note, stay neutral if your speed closely matches the enemy's speed. Yeah, like I said, I never actually let go of run, so it's not that different to me. We did it! <clears throat> Tag Chomp. Mid-air movement. Not a mid-air shell jump, right? This level teaches you to adjust your horizontal position while airborne. To do so requires a combination of techniques taught in the previous level. This includes left rights and minor left or right tap. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing, like, just adjusting your position. Most sections require you to be as close as possible to the monsters to progress. One tip is to tap right as you approach a corner and hold right to get max speed when you feel the time is right. Oh wow, that's a tough jump. It's a real tough jump. There we go. My god, that was hard. Hey, look what I found. I have to do that jump again. Oh my god, that was so close. Aww. Sometimes multiple Right taps are needed if you're moving too slow. Sometimes left inputs are needed if you're moving too fast. Oh my god, this room's hard. I 
Oh my god. There we go. Remember that your midair speed locks in midair when you are not holding left or right. That was hard. What the heck? I got wrecked by that level. <clears throat> Midair movement on moving enemies. This level teaches you how to land on moving enemies using techniques from the previous level. The most important tip is to understand enemy movements so you can predict where you need to land. Whoops. No, make sure to land on the right side of the blue Koopa. Wait, why? Oh, probably... yeah, okay. <laughs> nice shell jump. Dude, the fish, get out of the way! Mushroom. This where the secret is? Hey, cool. Twelve. Dude, that fish is so rude. Okay. Ah, oh, we're done. Yeah, so, so far everything's very beginner, except that note block room. Maybe I'm just bad, I don't know, but that room was hard. Switching between jump types. This level teaches you how to switch between normal and spin jumps in a short period of time. This requires you to press A or B once touching the ground, depending on the jump needed. Yeah, so you need to get used to if you're using the SNES controller, at least, switching your thumb, you know, you can see it on the input display. Uh, there are two ways to do this. The first way is to slide your hand from YB to XA or vice versa. The second way is to claw with your index finger and press A while holding Y with your thumb. Yeah. I'm doing the claw grip right now, so you see I'm never letting go. Like, this type of press isn't possible. With, well, maybe it is with just your thumb. I don't- I can't do it, but I'm holding run with my index finger. Why is this here? Okay. That looks like the secret. How do I get it? Claw grip allows you to have much more uh, control over your inputs. How do you get up there? But it may be uncomfortable for some players as well as harder to get used to doing in general. Okay. 
That was kind of dumb, but uh, we got it. 13! There we go. This room's pretty tough too. But we did it. Hag Chomp. Predicting enemy movement. This level teaches you how to time jumps based on cycles certain enemies follow. Since these enemies act the same way every cycle their movement is predictable. No, none of these enemies are on global time. Bullet bills move slightly slower than max running speed, so do a left right every bounce to slow down. Or just oh my god. Oh. Or just hold right like right that. Or hold nothing. <laughs> uh, sometimes you can jump to create visual cues for certain obstacles. Yeah, this is just know how the enemies behave, basically. Clap and Chuck's only jump when you are about three tiles above them. To pass the Chuck gate, jump when his hands are up. This allows you to be airborne when he is on the ground. Note, let go of to fall faster. Wait, what? I always jump when his hands are on the ground. Interesting. Remember to hold B to cross the gap. Is this a secret? Ooh. Hey, come this way. Oh, you only had to break one. Fourteen. Okay. Hey, we did it. Pretty easy room, yeah. The fish, moving fish thing, it's kind of interesting. Landing on falling enemies. This is something that's hard. This level teaches you how to bounce off of mid-air enemies. These suck. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Ideally, you want to bounce off of the enemy a little after the peak of your jump and when the enemy is at max fall speed. Remember to let go of A if you think you are too high. This is similar to doing a re-grab. Note, you can only bounce off of enemies if you're moving downwards. Okay. Yeah, these types of jumps, they're just hard. There we go. Uh, sometimes visual cues can be created to make these types of jumps easier. Remember that you can respawn sprites. Why is this platform up here? Is that some, uh... Can I save this Yoshi somehow? That's gotta be it, right? There we go. Fifteen! Okay. Unfortunately, if visual cues cannot be created, you have to wing it. The most important part is knowing when and how long to let go of A if necessary. Well, that wasn't it. 
Oh my god. There we go. Swamps are a special case since they start slower but accelerate downwards faster than other enemies. Whoa, that's a hard jump. You can spin jump off of thwomps as they start moving if you fall fast enough. Yeah, so in this game thwomps can fall while you're above them. Ah, very different from Mario Maker. So you kind of want to, you want to come in to the left while already being low, because if you're up high and you come down, they'll start falling and don't have much of a chance to bounce off then. Assessment 2. Oh man. Left, right, mid-air movement, mid-air movement on moving enemies, switching between jump types, predicting enemy movement, landing on falling enemies, all previous concepts in good luck. Really? That's not nice. This music's a banger though. Okay, we got a stall on the new block. Whoa! I guess I did that right. <laughs> okay. Oh, you can't go in the pipe, okay. Oh, it's survival, okay. Did it. Orb. Hog you. Alright, um, I think I'm gonna stop this here. Uh, I thought this was gonna be really short, but apparently it's long. Um, so we'll finish it in the next video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I post one of these every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern, so subscribe if you want to see some more, but uh, yeah, see you next time.